Hi everyone, welcome to Absolver. In this video, I'll show you a demo of how to work with Absolver platform to provide you with analytics over your data and to create the data lake. Absolver is a data lake ETL platform, meaning we're doing two things. We're doing the data lake and we provide you with the tools to run and develop your ETLs. What do I mean by data lake? We allow you to pull data, ingest data from many sources into a data lake that we create and manage for you on S3, which is very cost-effective solution. And on top of that data, we allow you to write ETLs and to send this data after you clean it, filter it, aggregate it, and enrich it to a target of your choice. In this demo, we will use data that is store orders data. It can arrive from both web and physical stores. This data will stream into an S3 bucket in a JSON file. We will do aggregation on this data uh, by some properties that we will see soon. And we will send this data to Athena, which is a data lake query engine that will allow the business analysts to query and analyze the data. So as you can see below, the data will stream from, will be ingested from S3 into the data lake that we create and manage for you. And on top of that, we run the ETL with cleaning, filtering, and so on, and will be sent to Athena. I will now move to the AppSolver platform. So this is the AppSolver platform. As you can see here, we want a tab that's called data source. Here we will see a list of the data sources that we are connected to. All of the data sources we'll connect will, will be shown here. In order to create a new data source, we'll click this new button on the top right corner. When clicking the new button, we will see a list of all the available data sources types that we support. You can see here that we have files data sources like S3, we have streaming data sources like Inesis or Kafka, and we can use databases as data sources like Oracle, SQL Server, Snowflake, and so on. A few words about our main concepts when developing Absolver before we move on. We had two main concepts in our mind when developing Absolver. The first one is simplicity and ease of use. We do a lot of complex work behind the scenes, but we wish the tool and the platform to be as easy to use as possible so that as many people in the organization can interact with the data and work with the data. We want to remove bottlenecks that only data engineers can work with the data and to allow all data practitioners in the organization to work with the data. The second concept is flexibility. We don't want to limit you to any specific content format, to any specific source or target of data, or to any specific uh, transformation or enrichment you want to do on the data. We give you the flexibility to work with the platform as you wish to suit your needs and to find the best solution for your use case. You will see that during the demo. Let's start. As I said, in this demo, we will pull data that streams into an S3 bucket. So we'll select the Amazon S3. Here we'll need to define the properties of the S3 bucket that we want to ingest data from. So I'll need to type in the bucket name and the folder name within this bucket if it exists. Once I've done that, AppSolver automatically behind the scenes is trying to um, analyze and automate some of the processes. One of the things that it does is to identify the files within this folder. As you can see here on the right, we have a list of the files and a, bl a, a blue V mark, meaning that these files can be processed and we understand and analyze them. One of the things that we analyze is the date pattern of the files. This allows me to process the files in the order that uh, they arrived. So we guarantee you that each event we will process will be processed in the order that it arrived. We also guarantee an exactly one's processing of each file. Once I've seen that AppSolver automatically detected the date pattern, I can also see that it detected the content format as JSON, and we can continue. As I said before, flexibility is one of the main things that we support. So this can be JSON, the content format. It can also be CSV, XML, or almost any other format that you can think of. The last step in connecting to the data source is just give it a name. In this case, I will call it orders raw data. When I click continue, I'll be going to the validation screen. Here we will see a sample data, a sample uh, of the files that we read from the data source. 
and it will allow me to validate that I really am connected to the data source that I expected to connect to. Once I validated that this is indeed the data that I wish to connect to, I'll click Create, and I will start ingesting data from this data source. I will now move on to the same screen, but with a, new, with a data source that already has some data. Um, and this is a data source screen. Before I'm uh, taking a look on this screen, just to complete the creation of the data source, once I've completed creating it, Absolver will automatically pull every new data that arrives in this data source to the data lake that we create and manage for you. So no jobs to, uh, to maintain, no schedulers uh, to monitor. Absolver will do everything automatically. Whenever a new data will arrive in the data source, we will pull it and store it in the data lake. Not only are we storing your data, we're also visualizing it. And this is the data source screen. On the left, we can see the schema of the data. This is schema on read, meaning that whenever a new file or data will arrive with schema, we will analyze the schema on read and we will show it here. It's not predefined, we haven't defined it anywhere. Meaning that if a new column will be added to your data, uh, you will be able to see it here. If some columns will stop arriving, you will be able to see it as well. How? Let's, for example, click this order type column. We can see when it was first seen and when it was last seen, which allows me to know when it arrived and when it stopped arriving. We also collect other stats and metadata on our columns. So we can see specific columns for in how many events did it arrive, how many distinct values and how many total values. We can also see the value distribution itself of the values within this column. So we can see the names and how much uh, the values and uh, what's the percentage. And we have this metadata and statistics for all of the columns. So this screen, as you can see here, it allows me to troubleshoot data issues a very, in a very early stage of the, of the process, not only when we're getting to the analytics uh, tool, but already on the data lake itself. So we can see here, for example, that we have an issue of, uh, um, of uh, casing. Some of the uh, values are with capital letters and some are not, just for example. So for every column, we uh, read the values and we keep the statistics, but we also provide a time graph that allows me to time travel and to drill down to specific point in time. In time. When I drill down to a specific point in time, all of the schema and metadata that we talked about will be updated in the UI to show that point in time. So we can drill down up to a single minute to see how the data looked at that specific minute and how the schema looked. This also allows me to troubleshoot data uh, quality issues. So this data source screen allows me to do two things. One of them, as I talked till now, the troubleshooting of the data. But the other side is it allows more and more people in the organization to investigate and learn and get to know my data and to build the ETL from a place of knowledge because we know the data, we know what it holds, we know how the values look like, and we know the data types. And now we can build the ETL on top of it and um, put the business logic that we want on top of that. So the data source screen allows me, uh, gives me actually full observability into my raw data. And on top of that, I can build my output. And this I will be doing with the new output button on the top right corner. When I click the new output button, I will see a list of all the targets that we support. And again, going back to flexibility, we give you the flexibility to choose the best target for your use case. So you can choose data lake query engines that will allow you to run ad hoc queries on raw data, like Athena, like Hubel. We support databases like Elasticsearch for textual searches, Redshift and Snowflake for, um, um, for dashboarding, we support files, we support sending the data back to streaming systems like Kinesis and Kafka. So you need to choose the best one for you, for the use case that you're developing. And of course, you can create many targets on top of every data, and you can switch between them in a, a very easy way in a click of a button. So as I mentioned before, in this demo, we will send the data to Athena. So we click Athena, and we'll give a name for this, uh, for this target, we'll call it aggregated orders data by device type CT daily. And I click next. And now I'm going to the transformation screen. And this screen allows me to write my ETL. It looks the same for every target that you will choose. On the left, we see a list of uh, the columns, the actually the schema of the data source as we just saw. On the right, we will see the columns 
uh, in the schema that we will output to Athena. If I want to add a column that exists in the data source to the output, all I need to do is to click this plus button and I will add it. So I've added now a column that's called city. I can rename the column in the output right here through the UI. So I'll change the name to customer city. So far, I've added the column into my output and renamed it. Now I want to enrich my data to make some transformation over my data. And we do that using the calculated fields. When clicking the add calculated field button, we see a list of functions that we support out of the box to allow you to do the transformations and enrichments. We support more than 200 functions out of the box. It can be numerical functions, type conversion function, conditional functions, and more and more. Everything you can think of that will allow you to transform and enrich your data. But in case you see that the function you need does not exist, you can use uh, and enhance our platform using user-defined functions written in Python. So we give you the flexibility to do whatever you need in order to get the result you want. In this demo, we will use a function that's called user agent parser that will allow us to get the device type from the user agent string. So I will need to set the attribute that I want to extract, in this case, device type, the input column that holds the user agent, and an output name. Once I've done that, I can click the preview button and it will show me how the data looked in the input, like what is the, how the data looks in the input column and how it will look after the function is doing its calculation. If this calculation, if this result matches my expectations, I can click save and then this column will be added to my output list. After I've done that, I can click the preview button. It will show me a sample of the data as it will be sent to Athena uh, at this current point. So we can see that we have the device type, the customer city, and the two columns that existed uh, in default. But we can see here the device type has some not available um, values, meaning that there are some rows without device type, which are probably rows that came from a physical store and not uh, the web application store. So in order to clean those rows from our output, we want to filter out rows um, and actually keep only rows that are coming from the web application. In order to do that, we will use the SQL mode. Absolon supports two modes of working. We have a UI, which is fully featured and allows you to do everything you can. Um, and also a SQL mode for those who feel more comfortable in writing SQL. Both modes complete each other. They can, all, they can both do everything and everything you do in one will be reflected in another and the other way around. So let's add a where statement to filter our data. And then we'll click preview again. And we can see that there are now no more rows without device type. Good. Now we said that we want to uh, do this output as an aggregated output. We want to aggregate the data. In order to do that, we'll click the make aggregated button. After clicking the make aggregated button, AppServer automatically detected the columns that uh, he will do the group by on. So we have device type, city, and the partition date, which is daily. Um, we will remove this column, which is unnecessary. And now we want to add some aggregated functions. Clicking the add aggregation button will show me a list of the aggregation function we can use. So we can use minimum, maximum, count, uh, sum, and so on. All of the basic and even much more complex aggregation functions uh, we support. Again, you can see there's a lot of uh, aggregated functions. In this case, we want to get the average of the uh, total of the order. So the input of the average function will be net total. When I click Save, this new um, aggregated function will be added to my select. And I can also change its name to be nicer, so it will be only average net total. Now I'll click Preview again. And I can see that the data looks as I wished. So we have a day, we have the customer city, we have the device type and the average net total for this device type and customer city on that day. The, the last thing we need to do is to remove this column that says append and duplicate. The reason is that by default, we uh, add this row, which meaning that whenever this output will run, we will append the calculation of, of this data to the table. If we will remove it, we will uh, tell AppSolver not to append the data to the target table, but to update it 
So we will have a table that is always updated with the new data, with the new aggregations. Once I've done that, I can click Run, and I will actually go to the deployment screen that will allow me to choose where is the Athena I want to deploy to. So I need to connect to the Athena to provide a database name, a table name, so orders aggregated device type. City Dale. I'll click next. And this screen will ask me on what time range of data do I want to run this uh, output on. So I can choose to run this uh, calculation that I've just made on the entire history of data, or I can choose to run it only from now on, or to choose a specific point in time that I want to execute this output. On. When I click deploy, I will actually finish my end-to-end -end flow. So I'm going back to the first slide that I showed you. What we've done today, the end-to-end -end flow, is to connect to an S3 bucket that has streaming data. Whenever a new data will arrive, we will ingest it into the data lake that we create for you. On top of that, we've defined an output that will also run continuously. Every minute it will run, take the data that was, um, the new data that arrived in that minute, will do the aggregation and send this aggregated data to Athena so we can query it. And as you can see here, the Athena already has a table with the data, and we can see the results of this query. Hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much.